Hello, deep and wide thinker. In today's video, I want to talk about how to think deeply and visually using the tree method. Now, I happened to come across uh, this idea, this method, uh, accidentally, actually. Um, I realized that in some of my um, in some of my whiteboards, the ideas were actually starting to look sort of like a tree. <laughs> and, uh, and it just kind of started to make sense to me how how this is made up. And I'm going to go through all of this, but we, we have three different whiteboards that I want to dive into today of uh, things that I've been studying. But also, I want to show you how this actually plays out and how it works uh, with the idea or the tree method. So to kick it off, we have the seed, right? I have this image here to visually communicate as well, but we have the seeds. Everything starts with the seed and the seed is the source idea that you come across. It's the quote that resonated with you, the passage of the book that resonated with you, right? It's the experience you had maybe recently, uh, an advice, the advice that you got from a friend, from a mentor, um, this is the seed and every idea you have starts with a seed of another idea, right? If you're, if you're dry and you're thinking, if you're creatively stuck, my advice is to gather more seeds to plant and water, right? Gather more ideas because every idea that you are going to come across and think of and think up is going to stem from another idea, right? Somebody else's thoughts. So, and also if you want a variety of fresh thoughts, I would encourage you to gather a variety, gotta spell that right, variety of ideas from many different places, right? We know that when we plant an apple tree, what we're going to get is an apple tree. When we plant an orange tree, what we're gonna get is an orange tree. Um, so you can you can get a variety of, of fresh, unique perspectives whenever you gather not just a lot of ideas, but a variety of ideas in a variety of places. All right, so that's the seeds, right? We have the seed that we plant. And then we have the roots. So this is what I consider like the thinking and developing of your fresh and unique perspective. It's the in the dirt work right here you're researching and you're writing without editing and for me this looks a lot like parsing out phrases and words and uh, writing what comes to mind as I consider those words which we'll go into examples of that here in just a second I want to pause just for a moment here and give you a free gift for hanging out with me today this is a, a short PDF guide on how to get insights from the nonfiction books that you read and that you love into your PKM system. By the end of this guide, you'll have a simple system for highlighting your books, a mindful approach for adding content to your PKM system or PKM notes app, a process for creating building blocks of knowledge for the future, and then a simple tip for making more connections between your notes. The link to the free guide is in the description below. Then we have the trunk. Right, the trunk. The trunk is uh, the main idea that you come up with based on the root work. So you have a seed, a quote that resonated with you. You think deeply about it. You look at it and examine it from different angles. And as you do, there's going to be a trunk that develops and it's the main idea. And this idea is in your own words, right? It's a single idea. Uh, and you may actually find a seed produces multiple trees. And we'll, we'll actually look at an example of that too here in a little bit. And then finally, the branches. The branches are the connections of other ideas to your trunk idea, your main idea. As you've come up with your your thought right your your brain is going to automatically make connections to other thoughts and ideas 
right? And so these, these ideas go above the main idea. And so <clears throat> when you look at, I'm going to pull this picture into this first uh, whiteboard here. When you look at it side by side, I'm trying to get it to where you can see that. Um, you know, you have the seed here, right? You have the seed and then you have the root work. The seeds and the root work, the main idea that you came up with, the thought, the insight, and then connections. Right, it, it actually looks, it looks like a tree. And uh, this visual representation, it helps you to um, do a few things. It helps you to first think of these ideas that you come, come up with. I mean, uh, the ideas that you come across are like seeds. Um, and they can be planted. Seeds are meant to be planted. If they are not planted and watered, uh, they will stay a seed right you're not going to get other ideas by leaving the ideas that you come across in your note-taking app and not interacting with them the interaction is what causes the growth right so that's the root work it begins to to show as you as you develop the idea and you eventually come up with something that is you right it's the you idea you the you version of the idea or just maybe a completely random idea that you thought of uh, and then eventually you have the connections things that are already inside of your note-taking app and maybe even more ideas that you can think of that relate to the trunk idea so we're gonna take a look here from the beginning where this all started and I'm looking at one of the examples here uh, this is a seed that I started with, and it's a, a, I often will uh, study scripture, study the Bible. And what I like to do is pull out words and phrases within a passage to examine further. It's like a, like a geo rock with a hidden gem inside, right? I'm looking for the gem inside of these words. So when I started, I started with literally with this the seed right here nothing else existed that you see right here it started with one single idea and what I did as I used what I call the parsing technique here to dive into these words so these are text elements these are not ideas that I am necessarily going to save it's it's the canvas and the just the the blank page that I'm working on, right? It's, it's stuff that if I were in a physical location that I may not keep, it may go in the trash um, kind of thing. It's not something that I really need and it's not gonna be something that's permanent, um, at least at this point. So I'm taking these text elements and I'm writing down what the word means because the Bible's written in other languages. Not every translation it, it really fully expresses the word that was meant to be used. And so I like to look up the words and that actually, that actually has turned into a way of me thinking and not just when I study the Bible, but when I read books as well, I look up definitions of words and the etymology of, of words and stuff, which helps me. Sorry about the rabbit trail there, but I've looked at the definitions of these words and I, I start writing in bullet points what they mean and synonyms and, and all that. And then I took, you know, I added in other translations of the Bible to see the passage through different filters to help me. And in, in, as I'm considering this seed of an idea. And as I considered and thought about these ideas, and these words in my research on the human body, I landed on this idea, this note title here, what God makes is never mediocre, 
it's remarkable. Right? It's combining the findings from the two words that I had originally pulled out. And then I added some additional thoughts and uh, research below to support the idea. Right? It surpasses the most elegant design, which speaks to the word wonderful. It's surpassing. It's extraordinary. It's intricate and purposeful. And then I took some of the, the facts about the human body that I had discovered here and added it into this note because it supports this idea. This is the idea, the, the one main idea that I want to take away, that I want to remember, that I want to share with other people, you know. And so as I considered that idea, <laughs> even as I was writing it down, I already had, I already knew uh, I had a uh, God is a designer whiteboard that I wanted to look through. So I took a tour through the whiteboard and I found some ideas that I wanted to add to this whiteboard, which is what you see here, right? This is a, a note that I took a while ago. God is the author of color theory. How you look at the, the sky and it's just incredible how the different colors work together and they're pleasant, right? Uh, there's another note here. There's a quote. Uh, this is from a, a poem, actually. Right, all these, I believe, are actually in God is a Designer uh, whiteboard. And I threw them onto this whiteboard because they, they go so well with this idea. And I made the connections by drawing the lines to all these ideas. And then eventually I made connections between the ideas, just like a tree, just like the branches that kind of grow into each other. That's exactly what's happening right here. These ideas are growing into each other. All right. So that's one example. Let's look at this example here. I'm going to turn on focus mode. This is sort of late, but I, I like the focus mode here. Okay. So the, here the the difference is, you know, in the last one I took single words that I wanted to look into, uh, but here I I parsed instead uh, phrases, right? Resolved to divorce her quietly. Joseph, son of David, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken. And so the same same thing, right? Here's the root work that we're looking at. The root work where. I, at the top of this text element right here, I put the passage or the phrase that I wanted to think more about and write down my thoughts. And uh, each phrase gets its own text element. And you guys know if you've watched any of my videos, I love bullet points. And so I wrote down what I was thinking in bullet points. Now, I was, the, the different colored note right here is the, the trunk note. Uh, but you can see I have kind of, I have three different things going on right here. So this is an example of where a, a seed, right? A seed could have multiple trees from it, multiple idea trees. And as I considered this, uh, in the story here, Joseph was, was set on divorcing Mary. It was a done deal in his mind because she was pregnant, right, with Jesus. And so uh, Joseph, Joseph couldn't think of any other explanation other than infidelity. So his actions were based on his belief. And I just thought, imagine what would happen if Joseph followed through with that belief. And then in the story, an angel appeared and let Joseph know really what was going on, right? Um, but I just had a thought for me, and it's more of like a prayer, and, and that goes to another point for me, is that you, know, you don't have to have everything be for someone else. It could just be for you. And so for me, it's, you know, Holy Spirit, when I resolve to do something outside of your will, remind me of your purpose, because that's what happened in this moment with Joseph. And this led to a connection of other ideas as well. I have one connection. But you also notice 
that I don't have a trunk idea right here. It went straight from the root work to the branches. And I know that that breaks down the analogy because <laughs> every tree needs a trunk, right? Um, but the, the idea is that you don't necessarily have to have a trunk idea. From the root work, you could have these connections. And the point is that there was connections made and that's a win, right? Okay, finally, we have this final example again where there's multiple trees going on here. And I did the same thing where I took phrases. This is a longer passage here, uh, but I took phrases and I began to do the root work. Hope you're seeing a pattern here where there's the seed and then I do the root work and in the root work it's just text elements and I'm just I'm just jotting down ideas. I I don't I do I use a text element because I think in my mind it kind of frees me to not to know that this is not permanent. Like I'm just kind of filling out what what is it that I think about what I'm looking at this phrase we're on a pilgrimage to worship him, right? And where is the Messiah supposed to be born? And so I'm just, I'm just writing what I'm thinking about without editing it. That's what's happening in the root work, right? And so I started writing down in the trunk of this idea, what is the purpose of your pilgrimage? Is it worth it? It's a question I've talked about this in other videos, but I love questions. And I love coming back to a note that is a question. And you'll notice there's nothing else in this note. I can add more if I want to later, but right now, this is what I need. What is the purpose of your pilgrimage? And is it worth it? Which led to different notes here. Life is a pilgrimage, a journey with Jesus. What sacred place is God calling you to in this season? Another question, highways to Zion, the pilgrimage journey. Notes that I've taken at different times, but now are related to this trunk idea. And you can see here on, as I was kind of just writing out what's happening, right? The Magi were led by signs in the sky, which was placed there by God. They continued to follow the star. It led them on until it hovered over the place of the child is what it says. And after that, I just thought, okay, you'll always find yourself in the right place and at the right time when you're, when you're being led by God and that that I knew was that's what I wanted to make this trunk idea so I, I went ahead and made it its own note card and now it's a permanent note inside of my note uh, my card library and of course I made connections some of these are visually different because they are highlights right they're highlights um, that I have in uh, Readwise there's a Readwise, connect, Readwise connection with uh, Heptabase. And so these are <clears throat> things that I had thought of or I had searched for as I considered this, this idea here. And there you have it, how to think deeply and visually using the tree method. I hope this was useful for you. You found some sort of uh, insight or idea that you're going to try in your thinking deep and wide journey. And I'll see you on the next video.